treatment of the cardiac dysrhythmias and death associated with foot and mouth disease, especially in case of uh, the cows. The purpose of choosing this uh, specific topic is at least to prevent the death to the extent of the 25%, because there is a death associated with foot and mouth in case of cows and lot of calf, mort calf mortality is uh, there and it is uh, going to cause lot of economic uh, losses to the farmers in terms of the money and also the cattle population is reduced. Whenever there is an outbreak of foot and mouth disease, can we go for some treatment? So that's why my aim is there and uh, uh, with this, uh, especially uh, the introduction etc, I will go with the introduction of this topic, especially about the foot and mouth disease, it's a very well known virus. I will not take uh, uh, much time for this. Later, uh, the different diagnostic techniques in very brief, then about the drugs which can be used in the treatment of the cardiac disorders which are associated with the foot and mouth so, uh, disease. And ultimately, we'll conclude what a take home message to the veterinarians are concerned. So coming to the introduction, foot and mouth or the FMD is an acute, highly contagious viral disease uh, affecting the worldwide. And of course, it is uh, affecting almost all the cloven-footed animals, including 70 wildlife species and also the domestic animals. So it is classified within the Aptovirus genus as a member of Picornaviridae family. And uh, we can also uh, see that several type of this hero prevalences are there the foot and mouth uh, disease uh, virus is having several, uh, that's why the vaccination is uh, being failed. And sometimes even though there is uh, vaccination later because of the new variant of the virus, the disease is being uh, spread. That's why foot and mouth is classified as a list A disease by the OIE, that's the official international death episode is World Org Organization for the Animal Health. So this, uh, this can spread extensively within between the countries and can cause severe impact on the economy and every, every veterinarian of the country has experienced this thing. And till now seven uh, distinct serotypes of FMDV are identified with the same clinical effects. The serotypes are uh, OAC, South Asia, African territories, SAT, that's SAT 1, 2, 3 and Asia 1. And uh, everyone knows this thing and uh, I need not tell. So, uh, the, uh, very specifically, we can uh, say that this virus is highly contagious and can spread uh, in case of West Africa, East Africa, and also there are variants of this uh, Indonesia, then Middle East Asia, Southeast Asia, etc. Then the foot and mouth disease virus is going to bind with that of the cell membrane, then it is translocated, and then later it affects. And recovery from one serotype infection will not provide immunity against another serotype infection. That's why many times, you, in spite of the vaccine, there are outbreaks. Uh, the second, third outbreaks are also being seen. And also, uh, after acute stage of the infection, foot and mouth disease virus can cause symptoms. Uh, less persistent infection is there, and they are called as the carrier animals. So they become very carrier animals and propagate the disease to the other animals. And when coalescent animals are vaccinated, uh, which are the animals exposed to the live virus, carrier state can occur. That's a very well known factor to most of the veterinarians who are in this particular webinar. So the disease is noted for its very high morbidity, but mortality is not so much except in case of suckling animals. And we have also noticed that uh, in our area, maybe in Chikka, Balapur or Kolar, in the previous outbreak, lot of animals have died. To the extent of 10% animals have also died. Of course, the established literature say that the risk of occurrence of myocarditis associated with foot and mouth disease is higher in young animals than the older one. That's why we have to concentrate on the young animals rather than the older ones and affected calves die without any clinical signs. That's also a, a alarming uh, sign because if any a clinical sign is there, then we can go for the treatment of the said animal. See here, there are certain facts that the mortality is up to 5% in adult animal whenever there is a cardiac attack is there and it shoots up to 50% in case of the young animals, that is especially the calves, which die due to the myocardial damage 
and as the everyone knows. So in cows, myocarditis develops without the oral lesions also. Many times, the oral lesions like slapping up of the mucous membrane, etc. are seen and such the type of the typical characteristic of the uh, foot and mouth is not occurring, but the cows are going to die. And the death of the cows suddenly occurs without any apparent clinical signs and calf death occurs due to the cardiac problem in general. But we can see varieties of the cardiac disorders. We have got the histopathological changes, the cardiac rhythmic pattern, etc. And the rate of mortality is very high, especially in case of young cows. And especially most of the cows uh, die. 50% of the cows are going to die, especially case fatality is very high. And the myocarditis in young animals is characterized by the highland degeneration, what you can see in the slides, and necrosis of the muscle fibers, then intense infiltration of the lymphocytes. All these are the histological lesions, and without any apparent clinical signs, the animals are going to die. That's so. And in this, uh, particularly in this slide, you can see that the it is called as the tiger heart appearance or tigroid heart appearance. That is the cause of the death, especially in case of the infected cows and postmortem clot, particularly or popularly known as the current jelly clot, which is which you can see in the yellow uh, circled area. And uh, the section of the heart, especially in this uh, one, you can see the section C of the heart muscle with focal necrosis and infiltration of the mononuclear cell. I am thankful to the authors, especially uh, it's from the article. Uh, yes, uh, this is the tiger uh, stripping, or it's also called as the focal myocarditis in the heart. And the, yes, the there are pale areas of the necrosis, especially on the lamb with the foot and mouth disease. So the foot and mouth disease, uh, uh, the death is totally attributed to the myocardial uh, failure and we can see that the vacuolated generated, degenerated myocardial cells, especially in the microscopy or the necrotic myocarditis in the lamb heart. Of course, the similar type of the lesions are also seen in case of the calf heart. And uh, of course, this is very well recognized in case of the large areas of vacuolated degeneration and also the myocardial muscle cells and several peculated degenerated cells, especially in the cardiac muscle cells. So apart from this one, the acute myocarditis it will be distinguished by the hyaline degeneration, muscle fibers and infiltration of the few of the lymphocytes as shown in case of this slide and histopathological examination of the heart of the cattle, adult cattle, reveal hyaline degeneration. And if there is a death in case of the adult cattle, that is totally attributed to the myocardial failure. And there will be multifocal necrosis with accumulation of the huge lymphocyte. The purpose of telling all this is uh, to go for the correction of the cardiac rhythms or arrhythmia, which is happening in case of the young cows, and they have got little time to survive following the cardiac necrosis. Hence. They, these are the deposition of fewer lymphocytes. Hence, we have to treat those cows with a, the as early as possible, as fast as, fast as possible for the, uh, especially in case of cows. And uh, before uh, going to the treatment aspect, we have to diagnose the condition as much as possible, where, wherever the facilities are available, or else we have to know this type of the uh, knowledge, especially the most important cardiac biomarkers released after cardiac injury in animals are the creatinine kinase myocardial band. It is also called as CKMB or CK-MB and another enzyme that is lactate dehydrogenase is there, LDH, it is the short form and aspartate amino transferase, transferase or it is also short form as the AST. And nowadays, this cardiac troponin 1, which is abbreviated as C small, T capital, L, N small, and I capital, or C, T, N, I. So this is one of the most important and uh, very accurate biomarker. Though the diagnosis of the disease associated with foot and mouth is based on physical examination, then a and the incidence of the death. These are all the three 
uh, things how we can diagnose this disease or else we have to go for the blind treatment that should not happen especially whenever the, it is uh, treated from the qualified veterinary graduate so the cardiac injury is indicated by many biomarkers as i have already told as uh, it is narrated by jeffy et al in case of 1996 itself and uh, we can see that ckmb creatinine kinase myocardial band is from the cardiac muscles and we will see what is this especially arginine and glycine they are uh, going to combine and they are going to cause this guanine adenosinate and it's converted to gmt and this is how the creatinine biosynthesis occurs especially in the muscle fibers later it is released into the circulation whereas this creatinine transporters are there and they are going to carry the creatinine and they buffer where atp with adp then adp energy transport is there then of course the energy store is also there and later it is released into the circulation and we are going to estimate this thing and of course this pyruvates are going to combine with that of the nadh and the lactate dehydrogenase is going to cause this release of lactates and nad so these are all the molecular mechanisms how these biomarkers are important uh, especially the diagnosis of uh, this particularly foot armor disease in case of the cows because there are no apparent clinical signs of the characteristic foot and mouth lesions and of course in case of the liver also the it plays also important role in the production of the certain biomarkers in case of human beings it is very important that ckmb concentration peaks uh, 24 hours after initiation of the cardiac injury cardiac muscle fibers they get injured and within 24 hours this uh, ckmb will increase whereas the ldh peaks uh, the during 48 to 72 hours after two or three days of the attack the tissue specificity and uh, the sensitivity to these enzymes limits the effective use of these enzymes in detecting cardiac injury so what we can say is these enzymes are not so uh, accurate so cardiac troponin especially cardiac troponin 1 or ctin1 is found to be the best cardiac biomarker especially in case of the uh, myocardial injury suppose in a in a herd especially in the big organized forms if fmd outbreak is there in the large cattle then we can diagnose this type of the uh, cardiac problems by estimating the cardiac troponin 1 so it is a very highly sensitive than that of the ckmb ldh and ast and it is the unique troponin expressed in the myocardium so the myocardial troponins are released from the cardiomyocytes and released into the blood so this is the way how the troponins are uh, released into the blood circulation and how it becomes the important biomarker especially in case of the foot and mouth disease diagnosis the especially cardiac problem the troponin starts to increase third to fourth hour so that's why it is in the very early stage we can diagnose the disease and peaks at 12th hour after the cardiac injury death occurs very early to the myocarditis associated with the foot and mouth so increased concentration of the ctni and abnormal levels of the ckmb and ldh will be noted in the animals with arrhythmia associated with the foot and mouth during the early stages of the disease and many times the calves die without any apparent clinical signs so these are all the lesions how the myocarditis causes the heart muscle to become thick and swollen and the cardiac muscle fibers are damaged and the troponin 1 is released from the cardiac muscle fiber and becomes a very important biochemical marker for the diagnosis of the poisoning especially diagnosis of the cardiac arrhythmia so the normal heart is usually it is having the normal structure with sinus node normal electric pathways and atrioventricular node everything will be normal whereas in case of the cardiac arrhythmia in case of foot and mouth disease in case of calves there will be atrial fibrillation and the impulses will be there and chaotic signals are there and the rapid ventricular impulses are there that's called as the atrial fibrillation 
is always it is uh, present especially in case of cardiac arrhythmias so detail uh, this uh, detection of ct and i is one of the most sensitive method of detecting myocardial cell especially in the early stage if you estimate uh, this thing especially in the cows and it becomes a one of the most important biomarker the age of the animal is directly related to the risk of myocarditis due to the foot and mouth disease virus and it's higher in case of cows which are less than that of the two month old so most of the suckling cows are highly susceptible to the foot and mouth induced death especially so that's why the death rate is uh, it even though it is said as 50 percent sometime it increases up to the extent of the 75 percent also once again it depends upon the species of the especially the variant of the virus and the mutagenic type of the genes so troponins are uh, the globular proteins on the thin filament of the striated muscles and responsible for contraction and relaxation of the striated muscles so once again in the troponins there are three subunits of the cardiac troponins one that's the troponin i or one what we can say ctni the cardiac troponin t then the cardiac troponin c whereas these are all the you can uh, see that diagrammatic representation of the troponins distribution my fibrils it is uh, uh, 94 to 97% distribution and cytoplasm it is 3 to 4 so troponins as usual i have already told that it is classified into t i and c or the troponin whenever there is a injury to the cardiac muscle fiber it goes to the circulation that's how it becomes one of the very important biomarker so how to diagnose this uh, troponin is we can take the same type of the human kit and in the blood we can you know, find out the troponins and especially in case of heart of the cows with foot and mouth disease so we need not treat, treat all the cows as and when it's required so we can go for this uh, uh, strip test very easily which can be done and uh, we can diagnose so the reactivity of the ctni is one of the more myocardium than the, the case of these uh, skeletal muscles of course they also release certain troponins but homology between human and bovine ctni is higher so that's why the cardiac troponin tests produced for the human use so please remember that the cardiac troponin tests uh, produced for the human uh, use can be used in case of cattle as the antigenic similarity between the human and bovine is 96.4 percent that means almost equal to that of the human beings we can use that particular kit and uh, diagnose the cardiac damage in case of the bones for the better line of the treatment so this is also another illustration how cardiomyocytes are going to be damaged and uh, apoptosis occurs then exocytosis occurs especially troponin and the physiological cell turnover is also there so the troponin complex here you can see that troponin i c and t are there in which are smudged in between the actin and tropomyosin filament so the positive results for the cardiac troponin indicates that red band is formed in the second one this you can see negative control line the negative results in case of say single band appears say negative result whereas the positive line uh, is this uh, two one and positive results for cardiac troponin in case of the serum so you can purchase the human kit and test it directly without any uh, problem and the it is also one of the good indicator of the myocardial uh, uh, injury but no more sensitive than that of the ckb for acute myocarditis it cannot be so ctni concentration more than uh, uh, point 1.3 milligram ml are diagnosis of the myocarditis with sensitivity specificity to the extent of 90 percent and 100 percent respectively so overall this uh, uh, saying is ctni is one of the important parameter that need to be estimated before we go for the diagnosis of the foot and mouth especially in case of calves because many times what happens if you use the drugs there is chance that these drugs cause the sudden death and cause especially uh, the cardiac fibrillation in case of the cattle and uh, the types of arrhythmia especially in case of the foot and mouth affected cows 
we have to know because if we know the type of arrhythmias then we can go for several drugs are there lot of classifications are there especially in case of anti arrhythmic drugs hence we can select a very suitable drug which is available very properly in the market with cheap cost and less toxicity so put in more diris virus has high affinity towards the actively growing myocardial cells especially that's why the young cows are more susceptible young animals are more susceptible when compared to the adult the development of focal areas of the inflammation hypertrophy consequent to the viral myocarditis show down the action potential so the myocardial action potential is totally slowed down ultimately leading to the formation of re entry circuits and ventricular arrhythmias are there so that's called as the ventricular arrhythmias so apart from this one the cytokines released during this inflammation are pro arrhythmic and may cause ventricular arrhythmias more and more that's why the cows are going to die without any apparent clinical signs and monoformic and polymorphic ventricular premature complex that's also called as this vpc ventricular premature complex especially in case of the i think uh, many of the audience are here the cardiology is not a well developed science especially in case of the large animal medication but we need to focus a lot at least to the extent certain extent we have to know so that we can choose better drugs for the treatment of the ventricular premature complexes we are the common arrhythmias found in cows affected with the uh, foot and mouth diseases so here you can see that abnormal electrical signals will cause the abnormal cardiac rhythms or it's also called as the cardiac arrhythmia there is a change in the qrs complex and also the p and the t waves which is due to the damaged heart muscle which causes the impaired impulse conduction so also here we can see that whenever there is a heart is uh, going to pump then the qrs complex etc they are going to change so here the most of the death especially in case of the calves is due to the sinus rhythm especially a study conducted by gibler et al in 2016 it says that out of 81 calves 19 death is due to the sinus rhythm and apart from this one varieties of the other diseases of the heart are also there polymorphic ventricular premature complexes it's uh, up to the extent of 11 that's also 14% and 8.6% is a uh, monomorphic ventricular premature complex 6.2 is ventricular tachycardia st segment elevation in 11% then premature junctional breeds so many times the large animal practitioners uh, might not have heard all this uh, very specific terminology as it is very difficult to do the especially the ecg etc in case of the animals so the atrial fibrillation also Uh, it is shown as 7.4 percent and low voltage QRS complex. All these are the cardiac abnormalities that is shown, especially in case of the animals. And type of arrhythmias, especially in case of affected with FMD zero type O, it's a very common variant. This OACCA1 O variant is very common, and the incidence of mortality in animals is especially FMD is due to the cardiac problem is atrial fibrillation 83 percent. and polymorphic this vpc group is 82% this uh, low amplitude qrs complex 75% please note that vpc means ventricular premature complex so most of the time the death is due to the atrial uh, fibrillation and or many times it is combined and now we will come to the treatment and management of the cardiac disorders especially in case of the calves so the number one suppose in a herd we can suspect the cardiac problem number the support supportive treatment includes the ampicillin and cloxacillin antibiotic at the dose rate of 10 mg per kg intramuscularly twice daily for 3 days so this is uh, a paper noted by priyanka et al in the uh, especially from the ivri and phoenix in megalamin they have uh, done one study at the dose rate of 2.2 mg per kg it need to be administered very slow intravenous administration is required once a day need to be administered for 3 days it's uh, it is required and phoenix in megalamine is one of the very well known this especially 
the uh, NSID is there. Then, apart from this one, we can also see that uh, then the the cow should be isolated and hand fed with milk uh, and gruel or porridge during the entire type of the entire line of the treatment. It should be there. The lesions on the mouth, if they are there, it's very rare that the lesions will be there. But if they are there, they should be washed with as usual 1% potassium permanganate or the boroglycerin paste need to be applied to all the cows or the animals. And please remember that most of the animals affected with the foot and mouth disease are always infected with the cardiac problem and they will make the death even though there is there may not be any death chance but the cardiac muscles are severely damaged many times it is noticed and many times it is not noticed so that's why you can go for the general line of the treatment and polymorphic this ventricular premature complex to be treated by administration of the 2% lidocaine back to the, because this is the class 1b that's antiarrhythmic drug 2% lidocaine at the dose rate of 0.6 milligram per kg slow intravenous once i am, I am repeating it need to be administered very slow intravenous over 15 minutes once a day till the disappearance of the cardiac arrhythmia is to be conducted Then potassium permanganate or the porin means uh, maybe a gruel of ragi or any other rice, etc. need to be administered to the cows because they need the very or, or light uh, diet and the boroglycerin. So there is what happens after the administration of these drugs, a significant clinical improvement uh, we can see uh, will be noticed after three days of the treatment when the rectal temperature will return to normal physiological range as reported or many times we cannot see such type of the recovery pattern or the temperature, etc. There will not be there. Even then, internally, there will be cardiac damage and about 42 hours after the arrhythmic treatment, the heart rhythm will change to intermittent unifocal VPCs or the ventricular premature complexes occurring at the rate of 9 to 12 VPCs per minute. That's how the research says. And the after 72 hours of the arrhythmic treatment, sinus arrhythmia will usually resolve. So this is the electrocardiograph pattern which is uh, conducted by the Priyanka et al. Of course, uh, in the field conditions, this is uh, more difficult. But in spite of this thing, if, we, if the facility is there, one can conduct this thing and uh, test about the recovery rate. So this is the electrocardiogram show the multifocal ventricular premature complexes or the VPCs of different morphology are indicated by the asterisk here, different marks, asterisk marks of the different uh, color. So sinus rhythm, especially SR means uh, this is the sinus rhythm and uh, especially different type of this totally the QRS complex may be inverted. And here the paper speed was spread at uh, 25 mm and the sensitivity of the ECG machine uh, was kept as 1 millivolts per one minute. So that's how if the academic uh, people want to do the research etc. they can take it for from this thing. And electrocardiogram after 48 hours of this uh, recovery or the treatment showing unifocal ventricular premature complex. So uh, especially the cow had recovered and many times the animals will recover after 42 or sometimes they may take the 72 hours also depending upon the uh, this troponin contact how much high it is so later uh, after this 72 hours most of the animal get uh, recovered unless and uh, until there is a very severe cardiac problem or we have if we have started started the treatment very very late that's how it uh, says then the lidocaine why it is uh, uh, very important here is it is an antiarrhythmic burst especially class 1b or wagon williams classification they we have see in the lower chart you can see varieties of the classifications of these drugs are there so the lignocaine or the lidocaine is a very popular drug which is used as a local anesthetic very commonly and the cost of this drug is also very very cheap 
So it blocks the sodium channels, the conduction system and in the Purkinje fibers of the heart. So we can see that this is especially the class one. It uh, one A contains the quinidine, of course the class one B, lidocaine and mexilidine. And apart from this one, many other uh, antiarrhythmic drugs are also there. Whereas this verapamil and diluted serum and other, other drugs, uh, see their, uh, the absorption of these drugs is our, now it's a question mark. And of course, the potassium channel blockers like amiodarin, sotalol, etc. are also there. The beta blockers, especially the propranolol and metoprolol are, can also be used in several type of the cardiac arrhythmia, especially in case of calves. So here you can see that the drug raises the depolarization threshold, therefore making the heart less likely to initiate and conduct early action potential. So this raises the threshold of the arrhythmia so that the arrhythmias which are occurring due to the cardiac myofibril damage will be drastically reduced. That may cause the and ultimately the animal will recover. And apart from this one, the another line of the treatment may be the flunixin megalamine, may be the meloxicam or any non-steroidal anti-inflammatory agents can be effectively used in case of the foot and mouth uh, induced cardiac arrhythmia. Here you can see the class classification just for your curiosity, the class 1 drug quinidine. Of course, uh, it is little bit toxic, hence we cannot uh, administer this thing. Other drugs are uh, very much limited to the human use. Of course, the lidocaine and phenotyn. Yes, we have used these two drugs. And of course, the mexilitin is also available as a one of the very commonly prescribed drug in case of the human cardiac arrhythmias. And class 1C, of course, these are all little costly. And uh, uh, the class 3 drugs, uh, they are also little costly in nature. And many times, they, they will not be available as and when is required. So what is the use of this flodixin megalamine? a classical non-steroidal anti-inflammatory agent, it might have contributed for the faster recovery of the signal by reducing the production of inflammatory cytokines, especially it is a, a very specific COX-1 type of the inhibitors, enzyme inhibitors and hence these uh, special inflammatory mediators which are going to cause more and more cardiac damage may be totally reduced. And the lidocaine is used predominantly for acute treatment of the ventricular uh, arrhythmias. Of course, uh, the animal is, uh, is suffering and already it is having the lateral recumbency. Then at that time, you need to administer the lidocaine, one of the most cheapest drug. But it has no efficacy against supraventricular arrhythmias and minimal effects on the autonomic nervous system. So we can uh, administer it so that the lidocaine or the lidocaine, but it is ideal for the acute treatment only in case of acute uh, problem when the case is very, very severe. Then you can go for the treatment of this lidocaine. And because it has a rapid onset of the action, because you are administering it as intravenous route, less than a one hour in case of a dog, and cats especially that has been already proved. And the short half-life facilitate the rapid changes in the serum concentration as uh, you are seeing in the right side panel. So in the liver, it is going to be converted to 2,6-xylidine and or else some other metabolites which are fastly excreted from the kidney. So lidocaine is extensively metabolized by liver, thus hepatic diseases and reduced hepatic blood flow can prolong the half-life because if you use the other antiarrhythmic drugs, then especially in case of acute problem, it may not act very fastly. Then at, at, at the same time, the hypokalemia sometimes seriously impairs the efficacy of the lidocaine. So lidocaine is available only as parenteral formulation for intravenous administration. Everyone has used this thing in case of so many uh, disorders, especially epidural injection, local anesthetic agent, especially the nerve block and many more, it's a very commonly exposed. But the, you should take certain uh, very important cautions that it should not be infused through the same catheter or line with the other medications what you are going to be administered. So you use separate catheter. A typical clinical approach in the animal is to administer 2 mg per kg as IV bolus over very slow, that is 
the one minute, less than one minute to affect slowing the ventricular arrhythmias or uh, this especially conversion of sinus rhythm. All these are the complexes that are present. Or to cumulative dose of maximum 8 milligram, it is containing 2 milligram per ml. So over the 30 minutes, you have to administer it very slowly. Then given uh, the very short half-life, repeated bolus of constant rate infusions are also available in uh, certain human preparations are there. They are called as the constant rate infusions. That they are they called as CRIs. So they will be administered 25 to 75 microgram per kg per minute and is needed to maintain the rhythm to control. So this can followed by the CRI 10 to 20 microgram per kg per minute. So that's also another uh, lineup. So there are certain toxicities of this uh, lignocaine I want to share with you is toxicity is manifested in case of dogs. It is not studied in case of cows, but it's extensively studied in case of dogs as GI and sudden CINS sinuses also there and sudden, sometimes sudden collapse of the animal is also seen if you administer it fastly as it is going to impair the potassium channels and drowsiness or agitation may progress to muzzle twitching and convulsions at higher plasma concentration. That's also another thing. And hypotension may develop if the IV bolus is given too fastly. So never hurry, especially when you are treating the cows. Take some time to administer it in the case of the fluid with very slow administration. Never administer it as such without dilution in the fluid. Many times the veterinarians will not have time. Suddenly they infuse for this uh, particular dose. That should not be because the lignocaine hydrochloride is never administered through any other route apart from the slow IV route. So don't try all other such, such type of the activities. And uh, apart from this one, the another drug, what alternative to this lignocaine, if, it, if you fear very much or sometimes the tablets need to be prescribed, then phenytoin sodium is a, a drug of choice. So this is also formerly, it is also called as this diphenyl hydantoin and it's one of the most commonly prescribed anticonvulsant. Of course, it is uh, the classification is done as the anticonvulsant. Many times the human preparations are available as hepatic injection and many more injections are uh, available, especially for the human use. And in veterinary medicine, its use is reduced because of the pharmacokinetic differences and susceptibility to the adverse effect. Earlier it was uh, used to the greater extent. Now it is not recommended for the anticonvulsant drug, especially for dogs and cats, many times the metabolites are toxic. That's how, but it is one of the very nicely acting anti-arrhythmic drugs in case of most of the animals tested. Of course, the data is uh, very less. I have tried to uh, collect it as much as possible. So the mexilitin is another drug. Uh, it is uh, it is a oral analog of the illodocaine. So mexilitin is available very commonly, but the cost, you can see that it is uh, very high. The cost is there. Mexilitin 150 uh, milligram, these tablets are available and one can go for it. And it is a very commonly used agent. Of course, the many people in this group may be small animal practitioners, especially this is very effective in using the ventricular arrhythmias in case of the dogs. Whereas it is not used as the monotherapy for ventricular arrhythmias. It is most often adjunctive to the treatment in case of severe chronic ventricular arrhythmias not well controlled by the sotalol alone or the dogs that do not tolerate sotalol. Many other drugs are also there. So it has fallen out of the favor of treatment of the people. Thus its availability is not nowadays. It is limited because even though it's one of the most effective drug, uh, because of certain uh, side effects, it is its use is uh, reduced, especially in case of the human. Apart from this, uh, it has got certain uh, limitation. Well, we have to go for the benefit and risk ratios because any drug which is effective will have a definite side effect. That's the first notion in case of the pharmacology. Anything which is effective against the disease will have a defi definite side effect. If it is not having side effect or claim to not having side effect, it will not have any effect. That's how the pharmacologists we say. So hepatic enzymes should be elevated uh, before the treatment and uh, periodically during the chronic treatment as well as 
the any time so there is a chance that the gi disturbances may also happen so the dose of this drug is uh, 4 to 6 mg per kg orally tid for minimum 4 to 5 days is uh, required then of course the cost may be high but if the owner is ne needed to be advised very properly that dix drug can save the life of the animal and atenolol of course Uh, this is one of the very commonly used drug in case of the human practice so this is also class 2 antiarrhythmic drug which not that it is a selective beta blocking agent and it's the more commonly used as a in case of veterinary medicine this is very commonly used in case of dogs as antiarrhythmic drugs so it is beta 1 selective it has less potential to cause for the contribute the bronchospasm as the bronchi smooth muscles so do contain beta 2 blockers and the dogs and cats so beta 1 selectively it is going to block that's how uh, this is going to cause the antiarrhythmic drug so the dose is pay, especially 0.1 point to 0.1 mg it is available as uh, the tablet 50 mg tablet is available then you need to taper the dose uh, till 5 or 6 days then potential adverse effects are dose related and more likely uh, it is uh, by systolic function is present and adverse effects include the myocardial depression sometimes the bradycardia is also there or the bradycardia may be sinus or the av block and hypotension may also be seen sometimes it may require the medical team apart from this one the another drug which is just also a human product and it is the class 3 drug with a variety of other properties its predominant electrophysiological effects prolong the refractory period so uh, of course these are all uh, the sodium channel blocking properties uh, sometime these class 1 drugs etc so one need to know this especially the cardiac pharmacology and cardiac physiologically very uh, properly before going to use any of these drugs later i am going to summarize this thing because you nobody should uh, get confused what are all the drugs need to be used uh, etc so so then amidorine is used to treat the life threatening ventricular arrhythmias especially this uh, it is used because of its effectiveness in the treatment of both ventricular and supraventricular arrhythmias because in case of the calves which are suffering from the cardiac disorders there will be ventricular and supraventricular arrhythmias are also there so these are all the other choices of the drugs apart from the mexlitin propranolol and amiodarone so this is this is the way how this uh, class 1 sodium channel blockers are going to act and class 3 and class 2 related dilatism etc going to act so this uh, on once again you need to measure the cardiac troponin or deciding the dose of a particularly the especially uh, in case of the cows that's uh, the best type of this thing most of the time the in case of human beings this is followed but the test kits are available for the detection of human can be used in case of cattle as i already already told and the result is 96.4% accuracy so ultimately what we can say is cardiac arrhythmia uh, due to the foot and mouth can be treated with 2% lidocaine suppose it's acute condition at the dose rate of 0.6 mg very slow intravenous then flunixin megalamin 2.2 mg per kg may be used uh, it is going to reduce the cytokine production and the mortality percentages of calf especially foot and mouth uh, associated uh, may be reduced by first of all we have to diagnose early then using the kit or uh, many times this uh, if you are quite uh, confident enough just auscultating the animal can only also indicate if you was uh, auscultated about 1000 uh, calves then you can see how much what is that without any ecg or any other thing so what is the use of this nsaid not only the clonixin megalamine but many of the cox2 inhibitors are also effective and apart from this one this uh, aspirin can also be used as the alternative drug acetyl salicylic acid and many times it's available especially in case of even the even though it's highly toxic in nature which causes the gastric ulceration but it is one of the effective agent so it causes the abomasal ulcers especially in case of the calves uh, and also the larger animals many times the ulcers 
are very common in case of the animals which are suffering from the thylariasis. So the dose of this uh, aspirin is 5 to 10 mg per kg hourly DID for 3 days, minimum 3 days need to be given. And you may ask the question, any antiviral drugs can be used in case of foot and mouth? Of course, uh, it is uh, too primitive to say because already research has been taken place that the ribavirin, 5-fluorouracil, 5 uh, this thing and uh, many of the drugs will protect against FMD virus as these are anti ironic viruses. And nowadays, re recently this uh, flyviravir is also said to be effective in case of coronavirus, but it requires very high dose, 200 to 400 milligram per kg. So the ribavirin is effective in protecting against the foot and mouth disease virus that uh, depend on administration in many most of the routes in the experimental study only, but still it uh, needs the further pharmacological evaluation. Both IP and IM inoculation resulted in 100% survival rate in case of mice. The same study need to be done case in case of foot and mouth affected cattle also because many people, especially Jo Yang Choi et al. in the 2018, they have done a very extensive review on this thing and they are indicating many antiviral drugs. But the cost of this antiviral drug is very high at the same time Many times we do not know the kinetic pattern of these drugs if they are given orally. If injections are available, well and fine. Many times this is the injection of this ribavirin, etc., they are available, which has 100 milligram per ml. And apart from this one, this uh, Brequinar, it is under the clinical trial at the rate of 50 microgram. So some, uh, especially the students can note on all these things because uh, the new drugs are there for the treatment of the foot and mouth disease virus. So uh, we do not know someday it may come because we cannot 100% uh, cure or prevent the foot and mouth disease. Why, why, even after the vaccine also it takes some time to get the antibody. So we have to be ready to treat the disease with certain drugs. So Brequinar, uh, it's available as uh, the 50 microgram and uh, it provided 25% protection for five days following FMDV challenge in case of the mouse model only it is tested, but till it need to be tested in case of the large animals. And these results uh, suggest that the Brequinar or Brequinar could be used as effective antiviral agent. So, so we do not know after another five or six years, this drug may eradicate the foot and mouth. Nobody knows about this thing. But the at, now at present, the cost factor and toxicity of the antiviral drugs is the limiting factor and lot of study need to be conducted. Here you can see that Brequinar especially, it is going to inhibit the functional proteins and protein degradation is being caused, especially that's especially though. Apart from this one, another very one of the important news to the veterinarian that Ivermectin, suppose Recently, Zahra, Naeem et al, they have paper, published a paper, especially in case of the ivermectin. One of the interesting things, please note down, in vitro antiviral efficacy study of the ivermectin has been conducted with FMD, a common virus in case of the variants, and it was found to be effective against foot and mouth disease virus. So this is very surprising result. And of course, this uh, you may be knowing that in the corona treatment also uh, another RNA virus, it has found to be effective against the foot and mouth disease virus. But the study revealed that the virus titer was drastically reduced more at the replication stage as compared to the attainment of the entry stage, especially. But this is a in vitro study. Please note down that this is a in vitro study. In vivo experiment evidences are very much required. And in case of the cows, especially under two or uh, two months age, the use of the ivermectin uh, is need to be questionable because it may cause severe toxicity also. That's why one need to be very careful. However, I think uh, we can use this in the adult cattle as one of the precautionary measure. So the, how it is, uh, this is to summarize uh, the entire presentation, affinity of the foot and mouth disease virus, actively growing myocardial cells. Then the, the, there is a development of focal areas of inflammatory fibrosis, hypertrophy, consequent to the viral, myocardiopathy, etc., slow down the action potential and ultimately leading to the formation of the re-entry circuits and ventricular arrhythmias. And because of this thing, the cytokines are released during the inflammation 
and these cytokines are highly proarrhythmic they induce severe myocardial fibrillation and that's why the flunixin megalamine maybe the meloxicam or sometimes the aspirin these care drugs are very commonly used and elevated ckmb or creatinine kinase myocardial band and the, the cardiac troponin these are the indicators of this cardiac injury and uh, later we can also this see why this lidocaine is very popular is it is going to prevent the ventricular arrhythmias and the ventricular fibrillation and polymorphic ventricular cells of course the phenytoin sodium can also be used and apart from this one many other anti arrhythmic agents can also be tested but there is no data as on uh, uh, these uh, things and uh, the academicians or the researcher need to take much more research so coming to the summary of this uh, entire presentation i want to make it very clear to the veterinarians who are practicing is if you may ask the question many of the drugs you have uh, told what are all the drugs need to be used in this so suppose the antibiotic therapy is very much required because many times whenever the cardiac muscle fibers are damaged few of the varieties of this uh, bacteria are going to affect the heart maybe the gram positive staphylococcus or sometimes the streptococcus so for this we can simply use amoxicillin plus cloxacillin preparations maybe the 10 mg per kg slow iv or im for 2 to 5 days uh, especially the course of the antibiotic need to be followed apart from this one the fluoroquinolones can also be used or the cephalosporins can also so be used of course there are no data on these drugs the efficacy of these drugs are already there in case, but in case of foot and mouth disease induced uh, bacteremia it is not used up uh, the second line of the treatment uh, uh, suppose the cough is suffering from the foot and mouth already then you can go for the lidocaine 2% at the dose rate of 0.6 mg per kg slow intravenous usually the cough will be weighing about 30 to 40 kg then it may require 3 to 4 mg so over the period of 15 minutes then this need to be done with caution or else it may end up with the cardiac arrest so uh, little slow you have to administer don't worry about this thing other than this alternative drugs so if you are unable to administer the lignocaine and you can prescribe the phenytoin capsules or phenytoin tablets and i have shown many of the preparations are there if you go to the sims or any other drugs we can get the trade names and mexilitin and also the tokenide tokenide you can use or else you can also use the propranolol it's a very commonly available drug so for 5 mg doses and apart from this one some literature also say that the atropine sulfate may be effective in the initial stages to prevent the atrioventricular block that also can be used and many times the if you prevent the cough mortality to the greater extent we can save lot of money to our uh, beloved farmers and later these cows become the asset to our country so with that i am going to end my this presentation thank you very much for everybody for patient hearing Uh, for such a long time one hour long time